Meanwhile, Snufkin was wandering along with only the waves for company. He had a wonderful time jumping out of their way at the, ver at the last minute and laughing as they snapped in vain at his boots. Just beyond the point he met Moom and Papa who were salvaging driftwood. Fine, eh? he puffed. We can build a landing stage for the adventure with this. Shall I help you drag it up? asked Snufkin. No, no, said Moom and Papa, a little shocked. I can manage it alone. Can't you find something of your own to drag up? There was a great deal to be salvaged, but nothing that Snufkin cared about. Small barrows, barrels, half a chair, a basket without a bottom, an ironing board, heavy troublesome things. Snufkin stuck his hands in his pockets and whistled. He preferred teasing the waves. But out on the point the snork maiden was clambering about on the rocks. She had decorated her singed brow with a crown of sea lilies and was searching for something that would surprise all the others and make them jealous. When they had admired it, she would give it to Moomin Troll as long as it wasn't something she could use to make herself beautiful. It was bothersome climbing about on the stones and her crown was beginning to blow off. But at any rate, the wind wasn't so strong now and the sea had changed from an angry green to a peaceful blue. The waves no longer seemed threatening, but tossed their plumes with a gay air. The snork maiden climbed down onto a little pebbly beach which bordered the water's edge, but there was nothing to be seen except a little seaweed and some bits of driftwood. A little downhearted, she strolled farther out on the point. It's sad that everyone except, except me does so much, thought the snork maiden to herself. They retrieve magic hats, capture ant lions and carry off barometers. I wish I could do something tremendous all on my own and impress Moomin Troll. <sighs> Sighing to herself, she looked out over the deserted beach and then her heart nearly stopped beating for out on the point a shape was washing to and fro in the shallow water and it was tremendously big, ten times as big as a, a little snork maiden. I'll run and fetch the others at once, she thought and then stopped telling herself not to be frightened but to have a look and see what it was. So trembling in every limb she went up to the awful thing to find it was nothing less than a giantess. A giantess without legs. How terrible! The snork maiden took a few shaky steps forward but then came the biggest surprise of all. The giantess was made of wood and she was very beautiful. Her cheeks and lips were red and her round blue eyes smiled up through the clear water. She had blue hair too, flowing in long painted curls over her shoulders. It's a queen, said the snork maiden reverently. The beautiful creature's hands were crossed on her breast which hung with golden flowers and chains. Her dress was of soft flowing red material and she was all painted, all of painted wood. The only strange thing was that she hadn't got a back. She's almost too good for Moomin Troll, mused the Snork Maiden, but he shall have her in any case. And she was very proud when towards evening she paddled into the harbour perched on the Queen's middle. Have you found a boat? asked Snork. And here it is, here's the picture. Fancy you being able to find it all alone, said Moom and Troll admiringly. It's a figurehead, said Moom and Papa, who in his youth had sailed the seven seas. Sailors like to decorate the, the prows of their ships with a beautiful wooden queen. What for? I sniffed. Oh, I suppose they like ladies, said Moom and Papa. But why hasn't she got a back? asked the Hamulun. That's where she's fixed to the ship's prow, of course, said the Snork. Even a child could see that. She's too big to be nailed to the adventure, said Snufkin. What a pity! Oh, what a beautiful lady, sighed Moomin Mama. Imagine being so pretty and getting no happiness out of it. What do you think of doing with it, asked Sniff. The snork maiden lowered her eyes and smiled. Then she said, I think I shall give it to Moomin Troll. Moomin Troll was speechless. Very pink in the face, he advanced and bowed. The snork maiden curtsied shyly, and they were both rather embarrassed. Look, said the snork to his, her sister. You haven't seen what I found, and he pointed proudly to a great pile of shimmering gold that lay on the sand. The snork maiden's eyes nearly popped out. Real gold, she breathed. And there's lot more, lots more, boasted the snork, a mountain of gold. And I'm allowed to keep all the bits he drops, said Sniff proudly. Oh, how they admired each other's finds there on the beach. The Moomin family had suddenly become rich, but the most precious thing was still the ship's figurehead and the little snowstorm in the glass ball. The boat was indeed heavily laden when she sailed away from Lonely Island after the storm. 
Behind her floated a big raft carrying the driftwood they had collected. Their cargo consisted of the gold and the little snowstorm, of the gorgeous big boy, the boot, the dipper, the life belt and the raffia mat, and in the prow lay the figurehead gazing out to sea. Beside her sat Moomintroll with his paw on her beautiful blue hair. He was so happy. The snork maiden couldn't keep her eyes off them. Oh, if only I were as beautiful as the wooden queen, she thought, but I haven't even got my fringe left. And she didn't feel happy anymore. Do you like the wooden queen? She asked Moomintroll. Very much, he answered without looking up. But I thought you said you didn't approve of girls with hair, said the snork maiden. Besides, she's only painted. But so beautifully painted, said Moomintroll. This was almost too much for the snork maiden. She stared down into the sea with a lump in her throat and went very pale. The wooden queen looks so stupid, she said at last. The moon troll looked up. Why are you so pale, he asked in surprise. Oh, nothing in particular, she answered. Then he clambered down from the prow and sat beside her and after a while he said, Do you know, the wooden queen looks terribly stupid, actually. She does, doesn't she, said the snork maiden, getting her colour back again. Do you remember the golden butterfly we saw, asked moon troll. And the snork maiden nodded, tired and happy. Far away, Lonely Island lay flaming in the light of the sunset. I wonder what you're all thinking of doing with the snort's gold, said Snuffkin. I think we shall use it to decorate the edges of the flower bed, said Moomin and Mama. Only the, only the big bits, of course, because the little ones look so rubbishy. Then in silence they watched the sun dive into the sea, and the colours fade to blue and violet, while the adventure rocked gently homeward. <laughs> that is the end of chapter four. I hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll be reading chapter five very soon. Okay, bye.